Greetings, uh, Southbridge TV. Bill and I will be uh, yakking about the paintings. We right, 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 yeah. We spent some time. So, just a, a little background on the show. We were, we were at his house in Belgertown and sorting through, I would say, 140 paintings, trying to find the ones that uh, I was particularly struck by. This one struck me because it's so mysterious. I, I looked at it and I thought, okay, enlightenment and so on, but then there's this motif of eyes out of this medium, you know, which is sort of a skyscape and a landscape and that although the flame shape uh, doesn't give light, it causes a lot of questions. It causes a lot of lights to go on in the mind. So then we started talking about it. I, I said, you know, what is, you know, you, you're painting a kind of mystery here, as it, it seems to yeah. me. So th this painting is called Emulating Jean Losa Reyes's Painting because yes, yes. in conversation with the painter, poet, and musician Jean Losa Reyes, uh, back in the 80s, uh, she introduced me to uh, this uh, type of, of, of painting called anthroposophy. And the anthroposophists, anthroposophists say that uh, shape comes out, comes out of color, not the other way around. So this painting was painting in that style where I started mixing color on the canvas itself. And out of those colors, the image emerged. Okay. So it's completely spontaneous. And that's what the anthroposophists want to capture, the essence of the mind and moment. And it's a particularly difficult style to paint, I think, mm -hmm. because the, the anthroposophists paint in mostly watercolor, so it's a lot more flexible medium, whereas acrylic and mixed media is not. Mm -hmm. So usually, even if you try to be completely spontaneous, you're going to have some preconceptions going in. And apparently that day I was thinking of eyes. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> the eyes showed up. <laughs> well, you said that these paintings were created between uh, 2020 and 2023? Correct. More about this? Uh, this is like uh, probably a month ago. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking about these eyes, and Rilke, the German poet, sure, and has, know Rilke, has yeah. this poem about uh, uh, a torso of Apollo that's in the Berlin Museum. Mm -hmm. And he says uh, something to the effect of uh, uh, everything around you can see, can see you. Mm -hmm. And I got that, I got that Rilkean feeling from this that I felt like, you know, I was looking at the painting, but the painting was looking back. Mm -hmm. You know, it made, there was yeah. kind of a thing going on. Well, one of my other artist friends, uh, the painter uh, Gabriel Gaitan, uh, uh, the muralist, he's got a bunch of, bunch of murals all over the world. I sent him this pic, and his response that it, did, it, 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 it reminded him of uh, um, uh, um, Magritte. Magritte. In, yes. in the eyes, in the, 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 mm -hmm. the, that he called it pseudo surrealism. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not quite surrealism, but you get the hint of it. And I said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so my, my response to all of that is to quote Robert Frost, if you see it in the poem, I meant to have it. <laughs> so if you see it in the picture, I meant to have it. <laughs> this is uh, what I call the Holy Family. And I named it that for you. Oh, really? Yeah, look at that. It says Holy Family. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did Bill give you the title? And he, he didn't know that. I just, oh. but he did. I, I stole the line. So when he saw it before you titled it, he said something about the Holy Family? Yeah. So I stole the line, so it's the Holy Family. Well, I mean, look. <laughs> right? I mean, you got the Papa, the Mama, and the little monkey. <laughs> the child. And, and even the littler one. I, I don't know, maybe that's a teapot. Yeah, it could be a teapot. I guess if you see it, I meant it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but also the radiance, you know, the radiance emanating. She's the heart of the family, mm -hmm. right? And he is 
Uh-huh. Right? The responsibility of the family. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. Right. So I, I have this thing that I've done for like over 30 years now, probably going on 40, where I'll pick an artist and try to get inside the technique uh, of the artist uh, through, through reading, through practicing. So this is uh, one of the uh, Rufino Tamayo studies, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the Mexican painter. And Tamayo, uh, although the images are not Tamayo, like he was much more abstract and much more rooted in, a, in his Zapotecan culture. He was a Zapotec Indian. It, but he, um, he had this interesting technique of layering color to achieve volume, not through line, but through color. So this particular piece has oodles and noodles and noodles of colors to achieve volume, and that's the radiance, that's the luminescence that comes out of the background in an attempt to, to figure out how Tamayo got all those freaking colors in that, that had some distinction. And then while, while I was uh, doing that, my son Ian gave me a, a book on Tamayo, and, and he had this thing about abstracting forms, like, the dog didn't look like a dog, the family looked at it. I said, oh, this is interesting. What, what would I do if I was abstracting something? And that's what I came up with. Uh, but the, the, the essence of the painting is really the background, because I was looking at, at you know, how, how does Tamayo achieve that volume in color? And I, I, you know, the jury's still out. I don't know if I captured it, but it gave me a painting. You know? But uh, the other thing I need to note about Tamayo is that in this particular case, he was known for using Native American pre-Columbian palettes. Like he didn't like the, 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 the Charoscuro guys. He didn't like the Italians. He stayed away from pastels. It was the ochres. It, it, it was the greens. It was the yellows. He really wanted to keep the pre-Columbian palette. And he spoke about that, that he, he wanted to, to, that he was very critical of folks like uh, Siqueiros and Rivera. He said, no, those guys are European. They're, 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 they're not Mexican. They're not native people. They, 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 you know. was all acrylics. Exactly. They're, they're all Europeans. You know, <laughs> this is the true palette. This is the true native palette. Uh, and, and oddly enough, uh, in the book that my son gave me, I learned that uh, um, uh, Tamayo is, uh, is an illegal alien, was about to be report, deported with Cubans, and uh, uh, the Munson Wilbraham Academy gave him a job, so he got to stay. And this was like in 1931 or some such or other. And then he ended up painting a mural in um, Northampton at the Art Museum, the library in, at Smith College. And he did a show in New York and became world famous, and that was the end of that. You mean at Smith College? At Smith College, yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of three Tamayo murals, and, and he, uh, he did a show, some famous show in New York, and every single one of his paintings sold, and he went to Paris, a rich man and all that, and that was the end of that. He didn't have to be an illegal alien anymore. So he ended up in Europe after all? Yeah, he did, <laughs> but he went back to Mexico. So this is a jazz musician? Yeah. Um, Playing looks like an alto to me. Why did I choose yeah. it? Yeah. I chose it because I love the fact that he's totally into the music with his eyes closed and I, I feel like he's in some sort of rhapsody. You know, and I like that. I like imagining where his head is or his heart is as he's making that air flow through the instrument and changing the vibrations, which is what I love about jazz, especially mm-hmm. the alto. Charlie Parker. Yeah, well, th- this painting is called uh, the Sean Channels Coltrane. Ah. And um, I like to do portraits from memory mm-hmm. because I, I, one of my head games that I play in my head as, as an artist is that if you remember someone's essence to paint a portrait, then it's more significant than trying to render an image, which as you may see in some of my other paintings, I, I can render an image. But, but to capture somebody's like 
But that's being. That's it, it, that, that comes from memory, from observation, from like you know, being like, there. So this guy, Dejan, was a, 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 a cat I, I met uh, first in Worcester, then in Northampton. And he was a wicked heroin addict, and he, I think he died of a heroin overdose. But uh, um, my, my, my sons were in art school, and one of their teachers, uh, Frank Newton, uh, played a gig with this guy. And I was like, shocked, shit, I know that guy. <laughs> it, it, and so uh, years later, I tried to remember that, that space in this little, uh, I think it was at the Green Street Cafe, Weezer? Uh, Frank Newton is an incredible musician. Uh, and so uh, some years later, uh, I remember that, that space, and that's what I painted. But again, the idea is that it's not a true portrait, it's a portrait painted from memory in, in an attempt in, in my head to capture the essence of a moment, not so much to render an image, uh, or, you know, which is, so therefore it's not a real portrait. And uh, what's the name of the painting again? Uh, the Jean Channels Coltrane. Uh, Channels. Yeah, he's channeling Coltrane. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Bill, why did you choose this painting? Because that's interesting to me. Oh, well, <laughs> partly because it anthropomorphizes a city. Oh, it, yeah, yeah, I can it, see that. It, it turns a building into a person, which I think is a neat idea. Yeah, yeah, you know? I see that. Well, th this came, my, my, my other son, Robert, uh, was in a band called Cosmic Duct Tape. It, every once in a while, I would do their posters. Uh, it, it, and so this was one of their posters for their gigs. And if you notice, that's actual duct tape. <laughs> that, that's literally, I, I, on the internet, I found a, a, a duct tape that has stars. So I, I cut it out. I had to glue it with uh, super glue so it wouldn't come off the canvas. But it, it, it's, uh, it's acrylic, uh, permanent marker, and duct tape. The duct tape is in the nose, in the face, in the eye, and in the head. Okay. It, it, so the, the other piece in there is that, yeah, I, I was playing with, with uh, um, they had, uh, they had this song called, Tw my son wrote it, it's called uh, 21st Century Kid. And, and they got me to thinking of the, the, the urban space. You know, what, 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 what are these kids in the 21st century doing with all this mess? Yeah, we're leaving them. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the space of trying to like, uh, you know, abstract it a little bit and not hit him over the head with sadness. But uh, anyway. Uh, that's I, also, I also like the poetry. I mean, there's a kind of synthesizing thing. You talk, you're talking about duct tape with stars, which goes to cosmos. Yeah. Okay. Cosmic duct tape. <laughs> well, the, 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 that was the name of the band. Yeah, it, yeah the, the, it was the name of the band. They deserve all the credit. I, you know, they're very talented people, and they came up with that band. It's no longer around, but they, they, they did good work. They did very good work. It's a very good band. Yeah, and then we'll go the other way. When I, when I first saw this, I just broke out laughing. Because I said to myself, what a sense of humor. You know, an amazing, I mean, these, right? I mean, a total demon. And yet here he is with trident and all, right? Horns. You know, uh, but he is a spirit that is guarding this community. You know, it's, it, it's like, to me, the humor lies in the, the, uh, the juxtaposition of one's expectation that maybe this creature will eat the roof. But no, it, it's really, it's a guardian spirit. And it charmed me. I just thought, yeah, I like it. I like it very Hi, much. Hi, Jim. What's the name of this painting? So oddly enough, the name of this painting is, and the God asked, what the freaking happened while I went to visit my brother? Mm. Literally, yeah, what the hell, what freaking happened while I was visiting my brother? That's the name of the painting. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he's like, it's a mess, you know, he was, the God was not expecting messy stuff. It looks like the, uh, stuff. Uh, the film Godzilla. 
1950, whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and the, the technical stuff about this, which is, I guess I should mention this. I, uh, it, my longtime friends and compatriots like Jonathan and Steve and, and, and Jim may know about this stuff, but uh, I created this in my, again in my head. It's, it's all in my head. It may be useless to the rest, rest of the world. But I created this methodology of painting uh, because I was very frustrated with folks wanting realism all the freaking time, or, 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 or uh, you know, cubism, all these isms. And I was very frustrated with that as a young guy. And so I said, you know, what, what's the essence of art? And I decided that it was, this is completely made up, but I decided that it was color, shape, line, and hue. Hmm. That whether you were a caveman or a computer artist, you were using those four elements. And later on, I introduced, uh, you know, color as a measurement of light and, and shape as a measure of geometry. But uh, in, in that space, uh, I decided that because we lived in the information age, we could study about anything. I literally found a book on the brush strokes of Rembrandt mm -hmm. in the Worcester Public Library. And it's like, you know, that's as, as esoteric as it gets. But I read it, and it, 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 it dawned on me that we, we as yeah yeah that we as contemporary artists, knowing all this information, then we can manipulate the two-dimensional plane in different styles. So in this particular piece, I'm using the the the, the concepts of, cube, of a geometric cubism uh, brought forth by Juan Gris, the Spaniard that uh, uh, died of mustard gas poisoning because he was in World War One. Uh, uh, who's an early cubist that few people know about. And then the tribal stuff, uh, my, my uncles and, and all those guys that used to paint, uh, 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 you, you know, Mimbrena masks and Kachina masks and that kind of stuff, you know, is kind of like uh, festival stuff and, you know, religious stuff for us. And I said, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to, like, create a, 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 a Mimbrena mask in, in a cubist town and have the god be pissed off because they screwed it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how I came up with that. Okay. Uh, it's and, disturbing in a very good way. There's something <laughs> very yeah. disturbing about that painting, but you, you, you're you not repulsed by it. Well, you're pissed off. They screwed up the town. They weren't supposed to. <laughs> and the title, the title is great. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. That, that actually is named after Bill Tremley because he gave me the idea. Oh, this guy, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. your he friend from on, Denver. Antonio Vigil. There you go, Antonio Vigil. Yeah, who lives, you know, like right in the heart of the Mexican community and has been a guy who has spent a great deal of time in Mexico being tutored on uh, Aztec and other Indian tribal gods mm -hmm. and he is particularly a uh, a devotee of a god named Tezcatlipoca. Tezcatlipotl, yes I know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> well the god of smoke and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, the god of you better you better not lie this is your final confession. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh wacky. Uh, so um, so that, that yeah. that's a portrait of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's the, that came out of a conversation with you. Yeah. We were yakking about your friend and about yeah. Denver and yeah. the hats he wore or whatever the hell it was. And, yeah. uh, and he, uh, the painting came out of a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if we turn over to this side, this is, uh, 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 I'm really curious to see why in the heavens you chose those. Because <laughs> thought they were bizarre. They are. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, there are people I know. I mean, for instance, somebody mentioned the name of Salvador Dali, uh -huh. right? There he is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see right? the goatee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but with the with the you know kind of a porcine body, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I just you know, I, I, and the self-satisfied moon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, th th this piece came out of another the study. Logical, 
the, the, this piece came out of another studies piece of the Italian painter uh, um, Francesco Clemente, ah. who's... Uh, uh, I thought he was Puerto Rican. Uh, no, that's his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> that's his cousin Pedro. <laughs> no, from, I, I'm talking about the, the, the baseball player. Oh, Roberto. Oh, yeah, I forgot, oh, shit, I forgot about Roberto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was Puerto Rican. Well, Francesco is, was Italian. And he came out of World War II, having survived the bombing, having survived Mussolini, and he was in the resistance. And uh, he was a very fractured guy. Mm -hmm. And before, before the war, he was a professor of classical studies, mm -hmm. you know, the archetypals, you know, uh, a, a, a la Klimt. Greek, Greek. Yeah, a la Klimt, you know, love, hate, mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. After the war, he becomes a completely disassociative guy. And he became known for this combinations of humans and animals. Mm -hmm. Like there's a collection of fish that have human heads that are freaking frightening. But at the same time, they're beautiful because the colors are meticulous mm -hmm. and they're bright and they're warm. The scales. Yeah, the scales. It's really a beautiful execution of the form, but they're scary. So in attempting to, to, uh, to study Clement's uh, work, uh, I, it got depressing. So I, I gotta do something else. So I started painting uh, humor in it. That's the moon, mm. you know, uh, but, but that's, that's uh, if you Google uh, uh, Francesco Clemente, you'll see what I'm talking about. This this very thorough, smoky, almost like, uh, accidental image that's disturbing and if you if you look at it you, you, you can see that the man is in terrible pain just he, he never got it together after the war but ironically he became world famous in, in yeah, successful right. whereas before the war he spent all this time trying to become world famous and successful and got ignored because he was in the classics. So there's an irony to that. But anyway, his work is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, this other piece is also uh, uh, an attempt at looking at, at, at Francesco. Uh, but in this case, the humor comes from like, you know, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to put like a black cowboy in there? It doesn't add up. <laughs> so that's... Well, He's thinking the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> this is like the marriage of some kind of human, how can I say? It's mechanical to me. Mm -hmm. it's, like a, it's like a carburetor. This figure here is like a carburetor, you know? Yeah. And, and this particularly, right? And, right? Carburetor. Yeah. And and yet, he is a, you know, this is a human being and... What about this one, Bill? Well, it's just a cowboy story to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the cowboy walks up the stairs, which are, leads him to, I don't know, this guy, he seems like he's the guard or something in a, in a jail or a prison. You know what I mean? He's got yeah, a yeah, prison yeah. guard hat. Yeah. You know? And so here's the landscape, the massive sun, some kind of, some kind of ephemeral light in the sky that having nothing to do with his 45. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't know. I, it just seemed, I, when I looked at it, I heard, you know, what was his name? Uh, Sergio Leone. Leone. Oh, yeah, the, the spaghetti western guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the spaghetti western guy. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. Yeah, this, yeah. This is your spaghetti Yeah, that's western. my spaghetti western. No, I, I, can't. <laughs> I I hear somebody laughing around the corner. Yes, I think it's Jonathan. <laughs> so, so for me, interesting enough, if you look in at the layers, there's like six or seven layers of paintings yeah. underneath there. I, 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 sometimes I work everything on the canvas. There is no sketching, no anything. Uh, and so I change my mind often. 
so it, it, it works itself out. It, uh, originally, and this is why you, you have this kind of ephemeral look over here. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, I started this painting as a tribute to Raymond Duncan, Michelle Duncan's uh, grandfather, who, whose work has influenced me greatly. Uh, he's uh, an Art Deco guy, uh, and, and his grandson was my, my, my visual mentor and, and, and friend. Uh, and so we've talked a lot about Raymond Duncan, and we talked about technique of how to use the thick line mm -hmm. to bring forth uh, volume, as opposed to shadow, as opposed to uh, perspective. Uh, and so, uh, but as I was working on it, 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 I, I got, it got distorted, and all of a sudden I had a cowboy and had a gun. And, and then this was supposed to be a, that was supposed to be a kachina that turned into a sun. And, but I left the stairway of the kachina face oh, and the eyes of the kachina. But it actually had a whole body at one point. Mm -hmm. So this paintings are called aggregate paintings because they, they don't really make any sense until they're done. And I have no freaking clue what's going to happen. And sometimes I don't like them. I paint them over and start again. But sometimes I do. And I like that one. Uh, particularly because of the geometric shapes, how the mountain turns into the staircase, and how the volume is achieved through color in thick lines. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, uh, that's that. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so this how are we people doing? We're hanging in? We're not hanging in? All right, OK. Let's yak about this one. Well, which one? This one? Yeah, yeah. OK. The hand sees all, and the castle is built on the dreams of the builders. And the smoke is snakes, and the feathers are the wisdom plucked from the sky. Oh, you are a poet, my friend. <laughs> I wish I could respond, respond you, you likewise, you know? Well, a rose is a it's, rose it's is a rose. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can transcribe it later. All right, a rose is a rose is a rose. Uh, uh, this is actually an exercise in, in, in capturing Mythology, I have this series called Mythic Gods or Mythic Figures where uh, I, I tried to capture myths in painting. So the Hamsa eye of the hand from the uh, uh, Arabic world and in, in, uh, the Middle Eastern world, also shared in Jewish mythology as well as Arabic mythology. If you, if you look closely here, you see the shape of the kachina. See the face and the, the two feathers, the body, the collar. Uh, you see the feather serpent here, Quetzalcoatl, uh, and um, uh, I'm not a fan of Christianity, and I'm st still an atheist to everybody's demise in my world. Uh, that's another story. But, but uh, you hear the idea of uh, the stained glass window yes. as a form of divinity, mm -hmm. which is the uh, the original intent by the monks to uh, make stained glass, to, to let the, the light of God filter through the parish in these beautiful colors. And so, uh, but I, 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 I made him a, 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 a face kind of sticking its tongue out. Mm -hmm. as, as you may see here, see, see the tongue? I do. And so, I do, and I also see another figure. Yeah, oh. right. So, yeah. so that, that's the... Uh, uh, that kind of like... The shadow of this figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another, yeah. another aspect. You, you could say that in uh, um, the third face. So it's actually three faces in there. The, 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 the third face, uh, um, I, I have some, some African friends. Uh, you, you guys may remember Jacob Ketchiku. And, and he gave me a mask of, of uh, uh, his folk. He's, uh, he is from the, uh, uh, the Sosa. In, in, uh, in their cosmogony, uh, when you wear this mask, you become uh, the spirit of that time. So there's different versions of mask that you embody. And so uh, this mask is an attempt to, to remember him, because he's dead. Uh, he got killed in a carjacking, but that's another story. And he used to live green and orange and reds. 
we used to talk about those colors. So when I was looking at this painting, I'm thinking like, yeah, how do we, this is one in a series uh, that, that are called Mythic Figures. It, and so that's, that's behind that story. So, so a lot of my paintings are, 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 are intellectual constructs that I want to bring forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, to the degree that I'm successful, I'm successful. To the degree that I fail, I fail. But often... How do you judge your own? Well... Do you the, judge? Yeah, all the time. The, the idea that I had in my pumpkin head, did it actually work? Mm -hmm. And this one did. Mm -hmm. uh, others don't. And then sometimes I leave an image that may be a failure in my intellectual construct, but it looks pretty or it makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's the case with that picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was uh, originally started as, uh, as an attempt of, uh, uh, of geometric cubism. And we shipped over here? Yeah, yeah, yeah we shipped over here. Okay. Uh, the, the laughing white dog yeah, with offers the, the, a necklace to the to the Dancing, dancing Moon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, uh, you know, that started as a, up here as, as a geometric cubist painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to look at, 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 at Juan Gris mythology, and I have no freaking idea. That dog came and he was laughing. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh. Well, because, that, that's because what she's <laughs> good. Yeah, she's look good. She's, she's a good dancer. She's got rhythm. She's yeah. got movement. Yeah, so. She's, she's got the spirit. You know, this I see as a kind of laughing chicken. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here's the head. There's the, uh, that's a laughing chicken. You're absolutely right, Bill. I didn't see that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I mean, this is a communal space. But it's here, it's the individual dance artist who has commandeered this space for. Self-expression, yeah, you know, and, which I approve of. And it was completely accidental. I just like that dog. <laughs> uh, again, this is another one in the uh, uh, mythic figures. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I try to goof around yeah. with religious stuff because everybody's so serious. You know, it's, you know, it's more Kachina. Yeah, so so Kachinas are not so Kachinas are not supposed to be goofy. Uh, they're supposed to be very serious entities. Uh, well, this, this is a robot trying to convince people that... Yeah, I had... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, your, you know, your geometric is in the, in the rock formation. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your sense of landscape as ritual space. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely, and, and that's the religious part. That you know, as, as you're familiar with with my mother's tribal world, you know, for for the Ashiwi or the Sunni, uh, that is precisely the essence of their spirituality. That that the landscape is the living God. That you know, you're not you're not a caretaker of the earth. You are the earth. Uh, and and there's no 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 separation between the divine and the secular, because we are all encompassed by being. Mm -hmm. We can't divorce ourselves from being. So, and, and not only that, but I mean, it, I get the sense that that the variety of dance is infinite. You know, mm -hmm. that that you can celebrate a million different aspects of the of the being of the God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and yeah. this I think is, you know. I mean, I get a very, you know, sort of uh, animal, uh, like somebody, you know, doing, imitating an animal in a dance, you know? Yeah, well, but, that's interesting. I, to me, I, I can see how you'd say that because of the, you know, the snake-like elements up here. But, but to me, what, what I was uh, uh, trying to convey is like the, the, the dancer, you know, these Put this all in elaborate because the if if you're familiar with 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 a Shiwi or some folk called Sunni or Pueblo mythology, uh, you know the tablas are here. You know you see you see the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the you know the kachina headdress and there's a lot of elements that are in that in that religious tradition that have abstracted. It, the idea was 
This guy is looking at the kachina, is going like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> He's just going through his space, you know? And it's like, uh, you know, as you can see by the expression in the eyes, He's like, what? What's that? And the kachina smiling. And so I think that art allows us to tell those stories in a cohesive way, in a way that cuts across time and culture. That, you know, in the, in the words of, of my friend, the, the poet Esther Hege, he used to say that great art was when the personal was the universal and vice versa when the universal was the personal. If you were able to achieve that, whether you're painting or poetry or music, you made great art. And, and I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. This guy, you know, I mean, he reminds me a lot of Juan Matus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I can I mean, see that. I mean. But definitely Juan Matus is sick. And, and if, he were to, if he were to speak, but also with his eyes, right? He's talking about serious intent, mm -hmm. you know? You have to have serious intent or what you try will come to nothing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and, I and the pain, and the pain. Yeah, yeah. The what, serious what intent you, you speak, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, and the pain. So, the, you know, I mean, and this is real portraiture. I mean, yeah. to me, you mentioned Rembrandt, mm -hmm. okay? This is your Rembrandt, you know? Thank you. I mean, I think that that, that portrait is a grabber. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it just... Well, uh, yeah, that's interesting, because sometimes I paint just to show people that I can actually render an image, that I do have the skill set, I just yeah. don't choose to oh, use yeah. it. No, you, uh, you can draw. Yeah, I, I, I can do it. It, it. Jonathan and Elizabeth, over the years, have bought many of my portraits because they, they like them. Uh, in, in the, uh, um, in, 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 uh, they've encouraged me to do more portraits, but I seldom do them because, uh, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, well, there's so many other They don't move, they're not film. You know, they don't have the life, you know, they, they, I want them to be kinetic. Yeah, you know, they, they don't, uh, you know, yeah. One of the things that you talked about is, is the fractures. Mm -hmm. This face is totally fractured. Yes, yes. Okay, and yet it's healed or it's healing, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, one eye is not like the other. Right, right, on purpose. Yeah. They, they, they literally do that to, to make sure that I mean, they don't, the symmetry doesn't match. This eyebrow is up, this eyebrow is down. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is a person who might as well be a Gemini. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. Totally the, the, the conflict, the split, yeah, absolutely. You know? And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's and, uh, the name of the painting? It's, uh, it's, it's called Cunejo's Complaints. It, and so there's a, there's a story behind it. So. Uh, the technical stuff. Uh, uh, if you look up here, it's actually glue, uh, glitter glue. Blue green. Uh, so if you look at it, it's, it's glitter. It's glitter all over the place. And that's one of the materials I regularly use uh, because, again, all in my head, it does. People can disagree and feel free to ignore me. But this is how I introduce myself uh, and, and entertain myself. Uh, often art is, and, and I think it has to do with, with my uncle who, who is a jeweler and who gave me my sense of color. He used to do pots and he used to let me play with the glazes just to keep me away and keep me busy when I was a little kid. So I learned to mix color uh, completely on my own and without instruction. I just mix color, see what happens. And you know, I made a lot of gray and a lot of brown. <laughs> <laughs> but every once in a while, I would get a real good yellow. And then I got to remember what I did. And I often didn't. But later on, when I was introduced to the color wheel and, and theory by, by, by Michelle Duncan Murrow, uh, it came back to me. I, I had a whole vocabulary around color. I said, oh, I know how to do that. I remember that color. So I, I, I've <laughs> purposely chosen materials that are available to every kid, to anybody can make art.
-hmm. It is not an elitist adventure. Right. It, it, it is actually a prayer. Mm -hmm. It is a way to believe in our humanity, to, to do more than our station, mm -hmm. to tell a larger story. And so the materials in this painting uh, are, are literally glue, gl glitter, glue, uh, um, cheap acrylics, you know, really cheap acrylics, the, the tubes that kids play, play with, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and a permanent marker uh, to do the lines because I, 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 I'm a pretty disabled guy, and as I get older, after many years of congas and other drums, my hands don't work that well. So I can't do fine lines like I used to. And I, I was getting really frustrated. And uh, uh, Michelle said to me, hey, you know, Picasso would have had a green period. He had a blue period because that's the color he had available. If it had been green, it would have been a green period. So what can you use? And you know, I didn't answer him. And I said, I'm a permanent marker. I'm good. <laughs> pieces of work. But let's finish with this, with this piece, because that's a great title that, that, that I, I it, it, we should shut up because this is the last one, but uh, this, call, this, this piece is called, What About the Fish? <laughs> and Donna gave it that, that, that title because I was in one of my mad sessions painting stuff. What's, says, up, with what's up with the fish? <laughs> and, <laughs> How about what's up with the owl? Uh, yeah, the owl too. So, uh, the fish right. and the owl. Yeah, and, and again. Good friends. So why did you choose it real quick? Because they're going to kick us out. Oh, really? Yeah, Margaret's saying, like, oh, Margaret is, uh, cut it. Margaret is well, if the we're going to have a few poems as well. Oh, okay. We're at 7.30. Okay. Oh. Already? Yeah. All right. So why did you choose that picture? Oh, I just thought, I thought this figure here was just wonderful, <laughs> you know? She, she, for me, is like, you know, she's all style, you know? Look at the eyelashes, you know? I mean, the, the, the lipstick, the, the whole thing that says, love me or forget it, dude, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, she's, she's just wonderful. She, the way she just comes out. And this one here, you know, she, she has a mind like, like a little uh, uh, Volkswagen. <laughs> you know, like a little uh, um, Beetle, you know, a BW. Mm, yeah, yeah, a little you know? Beetle. So, and, but, and, and, so, so real quick here. Uh, uh, what I was trying to do with this piece is that there were a lot of like nonsense about drag queens and you know oh. kicking people out and all that. And the, so so that's why I put in a, in a, like a, a, a bouquet of roses, of flowers. You know, this is a gift, Jack. What are you talking about? This is evil. This is giving you a gift. Shut the hell up and enjoy it. You know, yeah. appreciate the gift. It, 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 and then the fish is the idea of creation, a renaissance of, of uh, you know, from the pu putrid smell of a fish, you can grow real good corn. Man, you, you put it in the ground, put a couple of seeds, and you're good. In this case, carrots. I, actually, originally it was corn, but I couldn't fit the flour in the, in the corn, so I made it a carrot. <laughs> So anyway, that, that was the piece of, of uh, you know, uh, having conversations with folks who live in that world, who are that world, uh, who are in my world, and, and, uh, and saying, okay, again, I'm trying to validate uh, our experiences in ourselves and, and honor those around us. And so, you know, to you it may be a woman, to me it's a, it, it, it's a drag show queen, but, but that's the beauty of art. You know, we get to choose what we see. All right, we should, we should shut up and drink our beer here. Can we uh, move to the next part of the yes. program and have some poetry maybe for a few minutes? Yes. I, I, will, I will read one poem. So anyway, let me read a couple of poems. This is Why Not Ask Questions for Lena Peltier. Are those voices I am hearing manic, quetzal, screaming for us to save the ozone? The cry I bring back from the mountain, can it be recycled? Why not ask questions? They are not about fear. 
and I'll read another short little one and then I'm done. Uh, this is, these poems are from a, a manuscript called a Book of Questions, uh, which is styled up with Pablo Neruda's uh, 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 questionnaire. And this is called Pablo. For the Chilote and Machupe people of present day Chile. Pablo Neftali, you poet ghost mentor, lover of creation, you. Have you reincarnated as a leopard or an olive tree? Is there another common denominator besides DNA between your killers and the oranges you loved? Isn't Chile a delicious name for a country? <laughs> that's, right. that's my contribution to the case. Thank you. <laughs> this one's called The Music While the Music Lasts, and it takes place in the spring of 1958 in New York City, actually Greenwich Village. I already know a lot about jazz. I'm 17 years old. 17, wandering drunk into Greenwich Village, strip joint gaga at this boa constrictor, worming its way into a nearly naked woman's G-string on stage. A bee girl grabbed my ass. I thought it was me, you know? The girl couldn't help herself. And the word and the world were about me. So later, when I fell by the vanguard, this trumpet player was slow bluesing, like bebop, then courting up, bebop, then down, bebop, with a sad, albeit gold horn. I snapped my fingers at the bar. Two black guys, like NFL tackles, glared at me to stop popping. Miles, the M.A. MC shouted, making come come applause gesture. This was 1958, yesterday. Charlie Parker was dead. I heard Miles was in his kind of blue period, as if it were not joy, but Bird's horror of silence that made him fill each bar with 30 second notes. This was somehow why the great soul of night was gone, leaving a hole the size of Kansas City in miles. He was telling the story of how Charlie one night at Birdland, when people were clinking, clattering, chattering, he lost it, jumped off the bandstand, put his fist through glass for a fire ax, wading like Samson with the jawbone of an ass into the Philistines, that they would use him that way as background for their deals, creating a new connotation for the word ax. Only later did I begin to dream poems could be like that, uh, new connotations spoken when we stagger, struck by the beautiful, brunt, blunt instrument of the world. Mm. Get close. Get hmm? great closure to this evening. Well, it's, you know, it, it's funny, you know, I mean, that's the etymology of, one, of, of a particular usage of the word act. As in, did you bring your axe? Right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where it came from that night. Yeah. Makes sense. So the, this is the end of the program this evening, and I thank you all for coming. And uh, the show will be on display for the whole month of uh, October during library hours. And so thank you, Bill Tremblay, and thank you, AJ Suarez, for uh, this wonderful evening this evening. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. You're a very gracious host. We, we will come back, but only for you. <laughs> That's right. We'll come back for you. <laughs>